Hi, welcome back to a new tutorial. This will be showing you how to add different animations into blueprints using the animation blueprints. I'm going to be using the third person setup blueprint here to do it. And let's get started. Okay, so first things first, you'll need this animation start pack right here. It's in the marketplace under characters and animations. And just look for the free one animation start pack here. There you go. This is the one I'm using. So then you just download it, add to your project, and select which one to add it to. I've already added it, so I don't need to. Okay, once you open up your project, you'll see this content pack here, Animation Starter Pack. So in here we have tons of new animations that we can add to our character. First things first, if you go into this character folder here, you'll see you have a new character. The ASP character. He looks a lot like the original character except he's got a new skeleton set up for these animations. So we don't need this guy here anymore. So I can just delete him and drag him in. I'm going to go to your, character, your ASP character and you want to keep scrolling down until you find Pawn in this category over here. Uh, here it is, Pawn. And you want to set auto possess player to player 0, disabled and none because I'm not having any AI and I want this to be my main character. So that means when we play we take control of this guy. And as you can see he controls the same and the camera can move about with him. And he has this nice walking animation set up. So that's great but he has a lot more animations we can add so let's add those. First thing is we want to open up the animation blueprint and go to locomotion. And locomotion shows these different animation states that he can be in. One state right now is idle. So these are all different states because these are different animations that he will be doing for periods of time. So we're going to add a simple one. We're going to add a sprint. So I'm going to right click and add a new state. And I'm going to call this sprint. And this will be his new animation state. Now we need to decide how to get into the sprint. I'm going to decide that I, he can only get into the sprint from jogging. So I'm going to left click on this area here outside of the word so there's the inner box and there's the outer box I'm going on the outer box left click and drag to the outer box of sprint and it creates this and as you can see here it comes up with this little symbol this is telling me I need to create a condition to get him from jog to sprint so if you double left click on that it opens and as you can see it needs boolean to say if he can enter the transition so we're going to go back to my locomotion graph and do the same from sprint to jog. So we can create a condition that means he goes from sprinting to jogging. Now we only need one condition really. Add the variable. Name it sprinting. And compile. Now when you compile here you'll notice two errors here. This is just because we haven't set up our conditions to get into the sprinting phase. But we're going to do that now. So I'm going to select the arrow pointing up. To sprint by circling its condition here, double left click to open, and this one simply I'm just going to get my sprinting and place it into there. Okay, and now on the other one, this one I'm going to do a bit more. I'm going to get my sprinting, right click and get not. So what this is saying is the condition is for sprinting to be false, not true. And then if you also notice, to get to jogging, you need to have speed greater than 10. I'm going to bring this in, and I want an AND. So this is saying if the speed's greater than 10 and they're not sprinting, then we want them to jog. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this sprint to idle, double-click on this arrow, I'm just going to copy and paste this, but instead of this greater than, I want less than or equal to. Put your speed into the top, 10 into the bottom, and put those together. So if we were to just play this now, nothing would happen, because we haven't set anything up to tell them when they're sprinting. For this, we're going to go into our actual character here, and to the event graph, and add a new variable. And you want to add sprint button down. So I'll just name this and compile and you want it set to false. 
and as you can see there's also this crouch button down now on your blueprints I've changed this uh, this one for crouching will be wrong it will come up with an error so you just want to delete that right click and type in the key you want so I'm typing left control and hook those up and for sprinting I'm going to do the same so I'm going to bring in my sprint and I'm going to set it need two instances of those set the top one to true right click and I'm going to type in shift left shift sprint whilst it's pressed we sprint when it's released we stop and then we need to go back to our animation blueprint because we want to go to our event graph and now here we make it so our character can actually go into the next animation so as you can see this is the movement it's all set up this is just checking when updating the character what the speed and direction the character is going in and then what animation to do walking jumping or crouching we want to add a new one we want to add sprinting so I'm going to go from this as ASP character I'm going to do get sprint button down and I want to set my sprinting equal to this value and you want to add a new pin on here to get then to and attach okay so if we played now and we press the shift button as you can see the animation does change but into something that we don't want and when I let go of shift he goes back to jogging if I were to slow down and let go of shift I go into my idle pose so we've got the sprint set up now we just need the animations so to do this simply we'll just go back to this folder here the character and then you can see these two now these are blend spaces these allow the character to move in different directions when using these so there are two ways you could do this you could use the blend space or you could simply double clicking the sprint state play sprint forward rifle as your result and really when I sprint the animation works Now you can do this for this one because we only have the one direction, the forward sprint, as it's the only sprint the animation starter pack comes with. Otherwise, this is the more, because for right now, if you notice when we're sprinting, we are still sprinting slowly. That's because we just changed the animation and not the speed the character's moving at. So to do this, I'm going to go back to my character itself, where we've set the sprint, and I'm going to come off this one with set max walk speed and you want to turn your contact sensitivity off and I'm going to set it to a thousand you can see here if you go into your character, character movement, max walk speed is 270 so we're changing that to make him a bit faster when sprinting and then when we want to change it back do the same and set it to at 270. As you can see when we compile it some errors turn up that's because what we need is this character movement class as the values are in the class itself and not the character. So if I compile it now when I sprint I move a lot faster and then I go back to walking. So maybe that's too fast. Let's just let's double it. 640 there we go. So now we set up our animations and the new speed to go with it using that one simple animation. Thanks for watching the video. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to use blend spaces to blend different animations together so your character will dynamically and smoothly move between moving forwards, backwards, and to the sides. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, a thumbs down if you didn't. And if you have any suggestions, questions or advice, just leave it in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks guys. Bye.